Hi there, my name is Carla Leone and welcome to this segment. This segment is all about, well, as you can obviously know from the title, bookkeeping. And I want to answer certain questions which students may or may not have, or if there's something that they are battling with, you know, maybe what I'm sharing will help them to understand it better. That's the whole purpose of these lessons. I just want to apologize in advance. Uh, English is not my first language, so if I do get tongue-tied or, or I fall over my words, I would like to apologize for that, but I will try and explain it in as basic language and properly, well, as properly as what I possibly can. So, bear with me and I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that you can learn something from what I'm going to share. The first question I would like to answer is a lot of people ask, you know, how do I know which account must get debited, which account must get credited? Because there's so many aspects thereof and, you know, it's, it can be confusing. Oh, I also want to say I've got a band practicing in the room next door, so if we have some music, enjoy it. Alright, so first of all, to answer this question, we need to go back to our accounting, accounting equation. Asset equal... <coughs> Asset equals equity plus liability. Now, in order to identify which account gets credited and which account gets debited, you obviously first need to be able to identify what is an asset, what is equity, what is a liability. So let's look at assets first. Now, assets, to explain it very, very plainly, is cash. You're asking me now, how does that work? Simple. I any cash any cash or anything that can be turned into cash into the future is considered is considered an asset so but you also get um, current assets and you get non-current assets so c current assets are items that can be <coughs> that can be turned into cash within the next year non-current assets will be turned into cash in a longer period of time so if we look at what a current asset is, current assets, you look at your trading inventory, debtors control, now remember debtor is when somebody owes you money, your bank, petty cash, cash float, VAT input, and the list goes on. Then non-current assets are assets that will not be turned into cash immediately, but only at a later stage, like you're looking at your fixed deposits, any type of policy that you might have so it's cash but will not be turned into cash immediately then we've got your equity now the equity is a combination between your pro pro proprietary accounts sorry as well as your income and expenses now your proprietary accounts are your drawings and your capital and those are con considered the accounts of the owner and this is when the owner makes drawings or takes money or something from the business and then your capital is when the owner puts money into the business out of his own pocket then with that you have your income and expense expenses now your income is as the name derives it's money that you get in whether it's through services that you render items that you are selling, whether you're getting interest from the bank, that's all considered income. So any money coming into the business from a source other than the owner is considered income. And then you have your expenses, which will, which will be your, <coughs> sorry, which will be your electricity, your internet, your telephone, all the money going out to keep the business, to keep the business running, your cost, cost of sales, we will be talking that a bit later. All those items are considered your expenses and that will fall under equity and you have your liability which is your debt and then you have your current your current liabilities which is uh, current debt and debt that has to be paid in within a year or non-current liabilities which is long-term debts like mortgage loans and stuff like that so that's quickly in a nut in a nutshell what an asset equity and liability is and we're going to need that information when we need to identify which items will get, or which accounts will get debited, which accounts will get credited. Now, sorry, let's just draw our T accounts here. Assets 
equities and liabilities. Now, first of all, when you look at that, as we know, everything in bookkeeping falls under the T account sphere. Bookkeeping is actually one big T account. And now to identify what gets increased, what gets decreased, and where it gets increased, and where it gets decreased. So let's have a look. First of all, we know we have a debit and a credit side. Now, an asset always, now please, this is just something you need to learn. An asset always increases on the debit side. It decreases on the credit side. Your equity, because it's on this side of the, of the side, it just reverses. When your equity, it decreases on the debit side and increases on the credit side. The same for the liabilities. So your assets increases on the debit side, decreases on the credit side. Your equity and liability decreases on the debit side and increases on the credit side. Now, also another rule to know, your expenses and drawings always get debited and your income and capital always get credited. So this is the rule with what you know, um, which side, which, which item or which account gets debited and credited. So, and also knowing that an expense is always a drawing, uh, expense and drawings are always debited and income and capital are always credited. All right, so are we happy with that? I hope so. So we're going to be looking at a few examples now. Let me just get to the right page of how we put this into action. And we need to ask a lot of questions, well not a lot, but you need to ask questions to identify what happens to which, which what what will happen to the different accounts? Sorry about that. I said I was going to get tongue tied. All right. So now, before we identify which account gets debited and which account gets credited, or what account do you actually use in a transaction? What account in the book? But a lot of the accounts will depend on your current business. But you need to ask a few questions, number one. Number one, you need to ask, what did you buy? That's question number one. And question number two to identify which account to use is, how did you buy it? Those are the two questions. So, about 96% of all your transactions, if you answer this question, that will already be the one account, or the one leg, as I like to call it. So, let's say you paid for electricity. What did you buy? You bought electricity. And that is then already your one leg. But now, in the business, you're not going to have an account for each and every piece of furniture you buy. You can have one account with furniture and then all your furniture will be summarized under that one account. The same goes for your stationery. You're not going to have an account for your pens, your rulers, your pencils, your rubbers, your anything, anything like that. You will have an account stationery, so that will all fall under that. So why did you buy? You bought a ruler maybe or a pencil, but you bought stationery, so that will be the other account. Now, the other question is how did you buy it? If you bought it cash, your other leg will automatically be bank. If you bought it on credit, that will be, remember, that will be your liability. Bank is an asset. That will be because we owe, remember, it's debt. If you bought on credit, it means that you owe those people money. So that will be creditors control if you bought it out of petty cash then obviously that will be your other leg so to summarize this quickly what did you buy answer that question and then you will almost have 
well, that you will have uh, one leg. Then you ask the other question, how did you buy it? If it's cash, your other leg, your other account will be bank. If you bought it on credit, your other account will be creditors control. If you bought it out of petty cash, then well, then your other leg will be petty cash. Now the other question, now this is for buying. Now the other question is, what did, if it's for selling, sales, what did you sell and how did the customer pay for it? How did he buy it? Alright, okay, this one can come out. So, once again, how did the customer buy it? If he paid cash for it, then it's bank again. If the customer bought it on on credit, then it debtors con then your other leg will be debtors control. All right, are we happy with that? Remember, a debtor is someone who owes you money. So debtors control. So bank is an asset. Debtors control is an asset. Okay, and what did you sell? If you sold trading inventory. Then what can I, well, what can I say? That will be your other leg. If you sold a service, then your other leg will be services rendered. But what did you sell and how did the customer pay for it? How did he buy it? Okay, so those are the questions you need to, I, um, you need to ask in trying to identify which accounts do you use. I hope this, this has helped somebody. So, now we need to put all of this into practice and we're going to do a few examples now let's start off with our accounting equation assets equals equity plus liability and let me draw that line down there and I need another line down there okay now also um, I am using the ICB textbook, ICB Institute of Certified Bookkeepers textbook, which um, in South Africa I'm using their examples. So if you are an ICB student, you are more than welcome just to follow, just just to follow the examples. All right. So illustration one. This is in my textbook. It is learning example one B. And well, I did study in 2010. I think the textbooks have changed, but I'm sure that the, I hope that the examples did not change too much with it. So let's look at the first one. Now, the first thing you do before you handle your transaction, we're doing number one, and first of all, you draw your T accounts because this is how you're going to determine what uh, what to do and which accounts to use. So let's see, you issue a cash check for 500 Rand for wages. Now what's the first thing that we see? What's the questions we have to ask? Is what did you buy and how did you pay for it? So let's answer the other question first. How did you pay for it? Cash. So the moment it is cash, we know what's the one leg? Bank. Remember, cash and bank go together. So bank and what did we buy? We paid for wages. Okay. Now what do we know about bank? Now we need to identify are they asset, equity or a liability. So let's see. Bank, bank, cash. What did we say is an asset? An asset is cash. So this will be an asset and we know that it increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. Now wages, what is wages? Wages is an expense, am I right? Because you are paying money out. Money is leaving your pocket. And an expense is equity. So it's minus plus. And that's what you need to learn. Okay, so how much did these guys came, um, get paid for wages? 500 rand. So what do we know? What happened to our bank? Did we receive money or did we give money? We gave money so our bank didn't increase but our bank decreased, right? So, I'm just going to write here, wages, I'm going to explain now to you why I'm doing that. 500, and then our wages and expense, remember what I said, expenses always get debited. 
and then 500. Now what I've done here is you rem we must remember the rules of double of double entry because when you do a transaction like let's take this transaction for example is we need to record each and every thing that happened to make this transaction possible am I right because point number one what happened money came out money left the bank but we paid a wage we paid a wage so those are the two things and so two legs are responsible for this one transaction now you need to be able to backtrack your transaction and that's why you identify the other leg of this transaction which is wages you identify it there and with the wages you need to identify the other bank so that is, that is the rule of double entry because two things happen to make this transaction uh, reality am I right? Oh, I better be okay so you identify the other leg of that specific account and the same with wages you identify the other leg but now let's bring all of this back into the accounting equation so now we've got wages is minus 500 which is an asset so that's minus 500 then we have an equity which is minus 500 and there's no liabilities now another thing we need to notice is you have a debit and a credit you always have a debit and a credit now your debits must balance must well well must balance your credit so the amount of your debits must be equal to the amount on your credits and the amount on your credits must be equal to the amount on your debits okay and also the accounting equation must always balance like you can see it's minus 500 equals minus 500 so that balances that's absolutely perfect and that's what you need to look at remember for every debit you cannot have two debits of the same amount but if you've got more than one debit like when we do VAT we're going to do VAT on the, in the next session uh, when we do VAT you see there's, there can be uh, two debits but the amount of the debits must be equal to the amount on the credits and that's something we will look for but that I will explain at a later stage so that then is the first transaction let's go to number two and let's draw our T accounts let's look what illustration two says <coughs> excuse me okay we purchase an office computer and make an immediate internet transfer so it's like paying cash we did an internet transfer for the amount of 4,000 Rand so number one what did we what did we buy we asked the questions oh excuse me purchase uh, we purchased an office computer and we paid cash so number one is bank and that's already an asset and what did we buy we bought an office computer now you're not going to have an account for each and every little thing you buy you're going to summarize it all under one heading or under one account which will be equipment well in this case it's equipment you might call it something else now what is equipment is it an asset an equity or a liability now remember what did we say equipment is something that can be turned into cash so it is considered an asset so we've got two assets, plus minus. So now let's think first. The amount four thousand. So what happened to the bank? We paid cash. So we so four thousand rand moved out of our moved out of our account. Let's identify the other leg, equipment, and that is five thousand. Oh, sorry, four thousand rand. My mistake. I did that on purpose, I just wanted to see if you were awake, thank you. And then your equipment increased because, let's face it, we received equipment. The other leg is bank. And that was for 4,000 Rand. Are we right there? So, in other words, once again, we can identify, we've got our debit, and uh, we've got our credit, and we've got a debit, which is right. Now, let's move that back into the accounting equation. We've got minus 4,000 for assets. 
We've got no equity, no liability, and we've got plus 4,000. Okay, that's number one, that's number two. So does it balance? Because minus 4,000 plus 4,000 equals zero. So that does balance. And then here, once again, we've got our debits and we've got our credits. Excellent. Now let's go to number three. Okay. Purchased a pencil and a ruler from Petty Cash. So once again, let's draw our T accounts. This is the way to identify your accounts. And you ask the question, number one, what did you buy? We bought a pencil and a ruler, so that is considered your stationery. So the one leg will be stationery. And then the other leg is, how did we pay for it? Out of Petty Cash. Okay, now petty cash, this cash is an asset, and stationary, what is stationary? Remember we said it's something that will, an asset is something that will be turned into cash in the future, but stationary is something you buy for the business, and you technically write it off because you're going to be using it, so that's actually an expense. It's minus plus. Okay, so your petty cash became less okay the other leg will be stationary 35 and remember what we said about an expense it's always a debit okay your other leg will be petty cash and that will be 35 and once again how can you check it we've got a debit and a credit so let's transfer it back to our accounting equation here so an asset is minus 35 our petty cash, uh, our expense, our stationery is an equity, so it's minus 35 plus zero. Now once again, we check, do we have our debit and our credit? Yes. Is our accounting equation balancing minus 35 equals minus 35? 100% correct, so we're doing good. Let's look at number four. Okay, let's just draw up the accounts again. Okay. Purchased a coffee table for the front office from Petty Cash. So once again, they paid out of Petty Cash. That's our one leg. And that's an asset. Now what did we buy? We bought a coffee table. But once again, you're not going to have an account for each and every little piece of furniture you buy. You will summarize it, or your company can summarize it under one heading, under one account, which will be called furniture. Now, furniture, what's furniture? Asset, equity, or liability? It's an asset, because let's face it, you can sell it later. Plus, minus. So, your petty cash decreased with 370. Okay, furniture, that's the other leg. Remember, you always identify the other leg and it's 370 and our furniture increased okay, the other leg by 370 okay so let's transfer that back to our accounting equation number four so we've got assets minus 370 and furniture okay there's no equity there's no liability we've got another asset and that will be plus 370. Does it balance? Yes. Do we have our debit and our credit? Yes, we do. So that's how we know we've done it right. Okay, number five. Let's draw our T accounts. Okay. Purchased office refreshments from the deli on account. Alright, so what did we buy? We bought office refreshments. Okay, office refreshments, I'm just writing it like that. And how did we pay? We bought on account. So in other words, now we owe them money. So at the moment we owe people money, that's your liability, and it he becomes a creditor. Creditor's control. Now office refreshments, you're gonna you're gonna use that up when it gets to the office so that's an expense 
uh, minus plus. Your creator's control is a liability minus plus. Okay. So remember what we said. Your expenses are always debited. So your other leg, creditors control, is 650. And then your creditors increase because now we owe them money. And obviously, um, sorry, let me just finish. Right at there, 650. Now when we pay them back, it will go into the debit side. Alright. So let's do it this way now. Okay. So number five. Okay. There's no assets. Equity. Minus 650. And then plus 650. Does it balance? Minus 650 plus 650 equals zero. Your assets is zero. So yes, that balances. Let's do number six. We are almost done. Let's draw our T accounts. Okay. Purchased merchandise on account from Henley's for 800 Rand. All right, so once again, what did we buy? We bought merchandise, which is your trading inventory. Trading inventory. And how did we buy it? We bought on credit. So it's creditors control. We owe them money. They don't owe us money. We owe them money. Creditors control. Now what do you know? Trading inventory is an asset. So it's plus or minus. Creditors control is a liability minus plus. All right. So what happened? Let's let's see what happened. Your merchandise increased. Am I right? Then so your trading inventory increased. Your other leg is okay. CC for creditors control, and it increased with what's the amount? Eight hundred. Now your creditors control also increased because went more, we haven't paid them back yet. So that will be trading inventory 800. So once again we check, we've got our debit, we've got our credit. Now let's put that back into the accounting equation. Let's go number 6. So we've got 800, positive 800. Zero for your equity plus 800. Does it balance? Yes, it does. We've got our debit and we've got our credit. All right. Number seven. Okay. I'm going to just draw a line here and let's do number seven. Okay. So let's draw our T accounts. Okay. Sold goods with a cost price of 1,500 for cash. She sold it for cash, 2,500 Rand. So, let's identify again what happened. You sold, you sold goods. What happened? A sale took place and your bank increased. Am I right? So first of all, let's see what happened. Let's, let's do the first one. Your bank increased. As is an asset plus minus. Then you made an income. Sales is an income, it's a sales income, so that is equity minus plus. So let's see, we sold it for 2,500 Rand. So the bank increased the other leg sales 2,500. You've made an income, remember, income is always debited. Other leg is bank, 2,500. All right, but is that where we stop? Remember what we said. We, every single thing that happened to that specific transaction, to make that transaction work, we need to record. So not only did my bank increase with 2,500, not only did we make a sale and we received sale income, but stock also left the business. And also that cost price 
the stock was purchased on a cost price, so that cost must also be removed from the books to get to your profit. Remember, your profit is your income minus your expenses. So we need to write that part out. We need the stock that left the store and the cost of it needs to leave the store as well, if I can say that, just that we can know what profit we made. So in other words, whenever a sale takes place, you don't have two legs, you're going to have four legs. And the one will be your trading inventory. And the other will be your cost of sales. Now your trading inventory is an asset plus minus. Cost of sale is an expense. So it's equity minus plus. So, what happened to the trading inventory? And this is at cost price. It's 1,500. Okay, the other leg is cost of sales. It's, sorry, how much did I say? 1,500. And your cost of sales, the other bank for that transaction, is 1,500. You see, those two go together, and those two go together when the sale is made. So now let's transfer that right up to our um, equation, accounting equation. So let's start at the top. So it's 2,500 at the assets, then your equity. 2,500 positive plus no liabilities. Then we have to write off the stock which is minus 1,500 and cost of sales minus 1,500. So what do we see here? It balances number one and 2,500 minus 1,500. So me, we, uh, we made a thousand rent profit on that transaction. Okay, and now the last example sold goods with a cost price for three th of 3,000 Rand on credit for 5,000 Rand. So we sold goods again. So this will be exactly the same example as what we did in number seven. So I'm, okay, I'm gonna, let's do number eight this side. So I'm drawing my four T accounts because remember, whenever you make a sale, that's what you need to remember. What you have to write up, you need to, um, you need every transaction you need to book for. So it's the, your money that increased, it's the sales income that you've received, the trading inventory that left, and to write off the cost. Okay, so let's first look. So we sold goods with the trading inventory, but we sold it on credit, so it's not cash. So that will be debtors control. Debtors are people that owe you money, debtors control, and that's an asset, which is plus, minus. We received sales income. Now, sales is an equity, income is an equity, so any form of income you receive will be an income, and that will always be a credit. So let's do that first. We sold it for 5,000. Okay, debtors increase. The other leg is sales income, and that's 5,000. Is this 5,000? Sorry. Yes, it is. And we received an income, okay, debtors control of 5,000. But then the other leg is the stock left the business and the trading inventory is an asset plus minus. But then also the cost of the item, ne item needs to be written off minus plus. So the item cost us 3,000 rand. So our trading inventory decreased. Okay, the other leg, cost of sales is, how much did I say, 3,000. And then the cost of sales is an expense. An expense is always a debit. The other leg for that is trading inventory and that's 3,000. All right, so let's move that now back to our accounting equation. So we've got assets plus 5,000, equity plus 5,000, and then the second part thereof, 
once again acid minus 3000 minus 3000 plus 0 and that's the accounting equation and how it works. So what do we know? Let's just recap to identify what which accounts to use is you ask the questions what did you buy, how did you buy it, or what did you sell, how did you sell it you don't, you must remember that you must always have a credit and a debit of equal amounts your accounting equation must always balance so here you, if you had to write this out in an exam or in a test you will write out to say that bank was credited with 500 rand wages was debited with 500 rand same here, bank was credited with 4,000, equipment was debited with 4,000. Okay, and for every debit, there must be a credit. And you remember when you do a sale, you need to think of each, each and every transaction that took place to make that one transaction, that one purchase happen. And all of those, um, all of those transactions need to be captured in your books. Okay, so I hope and trust that this has helped somebody. I will do, next time you will see me, I will be doing a lecture on VAT, how VAT works, VAT input, VAT output, but that's a whole different story. So for now, good luck with your studies, and I'll see you guys again next time. Thank you.